Swim check one, two. Bike check one, two. Run check one, two. I think we're ready. Let's try this. Welcome to the Try Beginner's Luck podcast, a podcast where we explore the sport of triathlon from a variety of perspectives to help beginner triathletes on their journey. I am your host, Mashonda Shines. Well, welcome back to another edition of Try Beginner's Luck. Yeah. We are doing it. We are coming down and closing out this season strong. This week, we got Hector Torres. And I think next week, we have someone from USAT. So I am just excited to be closing out uh, our fourth season with some power hitters. Oh, I already said the name. See, look, Mashonda, you're messing up already. Well, anyway, I already said the name Hector Torres. And let me tell you, he is the bomb.com. He has over two years, two decades of coaching experience as a USA Triathlon 3 coach. He coaches all athletes from age groupers to elite, paratriathletes, and neurodiverse athletes. Um, what's really unique and special about Hector is he has his own triathlon his own triathlon facility where athletes can go and train in Central Florida. Yeah. How cool would it be to go be able to train indoors with people? So if you're in the Central Florida area, you want to check that out. But it doesn't stop there. Hector is heavily involved in Special Olympics. And in 2017, he spearheaded to pilot a program for triathlon. And let me tell you, that was only the beginning. He has been going around the world with different federations, getting Special Olympics to be included. And that's important because everybody should have access to this sport. But let me tell you, my first encounter with Hector was in 2020 when everything had shut down and endurance exchange uh, was on Zoom. And I didn't know this until today, but I think it was after Mike Riley, Mike Riley had introduced him for the, him and Chris Nickage for a particular segment. And then the following day, he just told me he got to fly to Dubai. So fancy. And then I interviewed him or introduced him for his panel. He is heavily involved in sport and he is highly passionate about serving those and helping others and making sure that this sport is equal playing field for all levels. If you ever have the chance of meeting Hector in person, his infectious personality will just bring warmth to you, his smile. Oh, and his style. Welcome to the Try Beginner's Luck podcast, Hector Torres. How you doing? I am doing amazing. That was a great intro. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was awesome. So I'm very excited to be here. I'm very, very excited to be here and be part of this. So let's get the ball rolling. <laughs> oh, we're going into your studio, the, the gym. Yes. Yeah, there's my gym, I guess. Oh, we get a tour. <laughs> Can you try Turn off the music. All right, perfect. All right, can you, is, is everything good here? Can you hear me fine? Yeah. Perfect. Wow. Awesome. Wow, okay, to, give us a tour, show off if you want, okay. So, so this is, I'm like, I don't know if I can um, into the background. Choose, no, hmm. It seems like it's blurred out. I know, I'm trying to unblur it. And it looks like someone is back there working out. Yeah, no, oh yeah, perfect, there you go. There's my facility. Oh, no. oh nice. Dan. Hi, Hi, Jan. Hi, Dan. And then this is my, the rest of my facility. Nice. Hi. That's Jan. She's Hello. one of my assistant coaches. Hi. So. Perfect. Awesome. So yeah. Who, who knew we were going to get this unexpected tour, but I want to see <laughs> all of it. So thank you for showing us yeah, all gosh. the good stuff. So Hector, you've been in sport for a very long time. And I mean, 
you have an amazing story that I only want you to tell, but you have this gym. Take us to the beginning so that we can back back to the gym. So um, it all started um, 24 years ago. No, yeah, tw- no, 25, 25 years ago. Yeah, when um, I went to the doctors, I went to the, I was 18 years old. I was weighing 263 pounds. Mm-hmm. I was overweight. And uh, my doctor told me that if I wanted to live by the age of 30, I needed to do something. And I was very close to type 2 diabetes and high cholesterol. And I was like, all right, I need to do something. So I started walking. And then I started working out. And then years down the round, years later, then I'm like, wow, I got, you know, I got fit. And, and then people were like, okay, wow. I'm like, he's great. So then I started doing some modeling gigs here and there. But then I was introduced into the triathlon sport. And they told me, I'm like, all right, let's do it. And I'm like, okay, let's try it. And um, I didn't, I was like, all right let's go for it and they tell me you can't do it and i'm like watch me and in my first sprint i didn't finish the race i couldn't finish the swim because i was like i could swim and nope i i was in a novice wave and we were running in claremont in summer sports we we're just running into the water i got kicked in the face my goggles were pulled out and I invited all of my friends and family. They're all waiting for me. Well, let's see when Hector's going to come out. And by that time, I was working out a lot. And I was like, I was waiting, like, I was into weightlifting mode. And they're like, where's this guy? And they see this Hulk coming out of the water, but he's being pulled in by lifeguards. <laughs> wow. And, um, and I was sitting on the side of the road. Um, I'm sorry, sitting at the beach with my head down. And I was just, like, devastated. I was like, oh. I'm like, I felt like that, that kid that was picked last um, of every single sport. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm reliving my childhood at the age of 22. And it came to the moment that I was like, what avenues are out there? And you know, back then, you know, USA Triathlon was just like spearheading stuff. You know, things were just beginning off. It was just like on, on their seventh, sixth to seventh year. And um, you know, the education department was minimal. And I was like, okay, how can we get started? I'm like, what's out there? And then I started with a triathlon, small little group and a co-ed group. Um, it was Vivian Arenas at the time. And, um, and I told her, I was like, okay, I want to get better. I'm like, what else do I do? I was like, keep on trying. But I was always pushed to the side because I was different. Because mm. remember, it was 2003. And at that time, you know, um, if we know this, and I'm not going to say, you, you know, um, the triathlon sport is a white dominant sport at that time. So you have a Latino, a Puerto Rican Latino in Claremont, Florida, that's predominantly white and trying to do a sport. And I was like, I was the whitest person, I was the darkest person getting in the water. And it was like, who is that person? <laughs> and I was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm here to break down as many barriers as I can. Then, you know, I started um, doing good. Um, I finished a swim on my second race. It was like four weeks later. It took me 45 minutes to do a quarter mile swim. Okay. And then, um, gradually I started getting better and better. And then I was like, okay, I'm like, how can I help others start and get into the sport? Because it changed my life. And then I approached, um, USAT says, look, do you have a coaching program? And at that time I was the marketing director for a TV station and, uh, I'm sorry, for a radio station. And I was like, all right, let's, let's get moving. So I called in sick a weekend and I flew up to, to get my certification. And then from there, it has been changing. Um, I, I was going to go to law school, didn't go to law school. I, pers- I said, I'm going to change my master's degree and I wanted to health and fitness. Now I started, um, now I have two master's degrees in health science and, and human performance and seeing how I could change the world and help all the people get into the sport. And then I quit my job, started coaching. Then I opened my gym. Um, and it was a small gym. I started in an apartment, a small one bedroom apartment, just coaching people. And then um, I got into an accident um, in 2010 um, and when I was in Germany and in doing a race um, while racing. And I was in a wheelchair. I'm like, I was on a walker coaching on that. Then I was like, look, I need to get back. And they're like, yeah, I'm like, they're, they're like, your, your determination I was like, no, I'm like, I have a dream. 
I'm going to help people and I'm going to get people into the sport. And, and at that time I was volunteering with USA Triathlon and, um, you know, I was the chair for the Florida region. And then I was like, you know what? I want to open a gym. And I opened a bigger facility and it was 1100 square feet. And I started growing it, growing there. Then the pandemic hit. And then I kept on working it out. I'm like, I don't care. I'm just going to keep it open. And now I'm at 2200 square feet at a big facility. And I've been working with all athletes of all different levels. And then I was introduced with Special Olympics. And that literally changed my world. And I'll leave it there. <laughs> you know, there's so much to unpack in that, Hector, like you did so much. And I think the one thing that stood out to me that, well, it's not one thing, it's several things stood out to me, but the one thing I'm going to hit on right now is the fact is they told you that you couldn't. So you told them to watch me. And even though you had the one incident where you went into the water and you didn't finish, you've gone on since then to complete over 34 Ironman men races. So just because you have one one bad race or two bad races doesn't mean that's the end of your career too. Second, I'm glad you showed the people what you could do because they're still watching you. Yeah, and, you know, it's, it's funny. Oh, go ahead. ahead Anybody mentioned that because the first person who said that I couldn't do it, he reaches, he reached out to me. He's like, I can't believe the stuff you've done. And I'm like, yeah, all I needed was that push and for you to tell me that I couldn't do it. So, yeah. That's it. Prove them wrong. And it's, and if, if everyone just took that in heart, it was like, look, you just need that one person, that one person, you know, and there was one person in my life that said, I'm like, I believe in you. Mm. I'm like, I believe you could do this. And then as a coach, I use that as like, okay, I mean, and there's people that are like, there's some girls like, um, that I told last year, I was like, look, I'll take you to worlds. Just trust me. And they were like, oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. I'm like, just trust me. I'll take you to Worlds. And I'm like, I took several girls to Worlds last year. They thought, and then right before they got in the water, I took them, pulled them aside. I says, remember what I told you last year? That I'll take you to Worlds. Look where we are now. Come and they're on. just like crying before getting in the water. <laughs> Come on. And it's fascinating. So it yeah, is. so it's really awesome. So you get to turn around a negative scenario and now get to pour into several athletes. And um, I just, I got to sit there for a second. Like sometimes we just got to park the car and just talk about how it's important to speak life into others. And sometimes when people are telling you what they can't do, it's a direct reflection of what it's in that person's life. And they're just projecting on you. And I hear so often, Hector, about the people who are like, I can't, I, I don't, that's not for me. Or I can swim or no, I can bike and run, but that's women I can't do. And I'm like, what if there were no limitations? And to your point, somebody believing in you, because we all have moments where we don't believe in ourselves, but it's like, man, somebody else believes in my ability okay, I think I can too. Because if someone was to tell you that they're always confident, they always got it together, they're a bold-faced lie. And it's oh, not the yeah. truth, <laughs> right? Now you can exhibit I mean, confidence and be a very confident person, but we all have moments of self-doubt. But when somebody yes. tells you that they believe it, <laughs> that's the game changing. It, it, it changes everything, especially if you come and you have other traumas that you're packing in other things that you've had to work through, it really does make a difference. And so you've gone on to not only, you work with some really amazing and high profile people. And so do you find that you're having to motivate them in a way as well to keep them going and kind of pour back in that positivity into them as well? Yes, absolutely. Because even though you could be fast, even though you could be strong, you know, even though you think I'm like that, 
uh, many people think that I'm like, okay, I made it this far, I'm super fast, but we all have that moment of insecurity, that moment of doubt, that sometimes they, they doubt themselves. And that's when I tell you, everyone should have a coach. Everyone should have someone they could rely to because in that moment, you'll find to them and say, hey, remember where you started? Because we all forget. We all forget those moments. So when you have that medal, when you have that medal hanging, we forget, oh, okay, we got a medal. No, no, no. That medal stands there to remind you the day that you pushed through, that you thought that it was hard, that you wanted to give up. Because it's very easy to give up. It's very easy to say, okay, look, I couldn't do it. But no, people forget the hard, the grind, that when you're pushing through those demons that we fight every single day that says you can't, it says, no, 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 that gun went off and I am not stopping until I cross that finish line. And it's like, that's, is that drive? <laughs> I'm like, is that drive, that determination, that will, that I'm like, people forget. People forget, I'm like, oh, I got a medal. I'm like, no, I'm like, where are your medals? Are they sitting in a box? Take them out, take them out, show them because that day, because I'm like, I've done 34 Ironmans, okay? And I was like, and it is hard. We forget those days that I'm like, oh, you're swimming. You're like, oh, God, I'm going to go today. Today is my day. I'm going to go. But it's like, no. I was like, no. I'm like, and so it is funny because I'm like, when we're hurting, when we're hurting, we says, oh, God, give me strength. Give me strength. And it's like, no. And God's going to tell you right at you. I'm giving you the opportunity to show strength because you already have it within you. You just have to find it. So it's those little things that is like, all right, we just have to keep on striving, girl, because in those moments of darkness, there's only one person who can pull you through, and that's yourself. Little Hector, you done took us to church and back. Let me go ahead and send you an <laughs> offering because that was mm, mm, good. Oh, Hector for president, you can come and motivate this audience anytime you desire because let me tell you, I, let, me just, let me just touch on the subject and let you roll because you, you got this. It's like, it's, I got to tell you, I'm like, I've seen so many people. I've seen so many people. I'm like many coaches that want to give up because they're having a bad time, they're having a bad season. And it's like, and I have to tell them and say, guys, no, 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 no. It's like, remember why you started. And we forget our why. Why did we sign up? Because there was an inch of us. There's that voice in the back of our head that says, you could do this. Yeah. You could have to, you just have to just put in the work. Yeah. And then once you put in the work, you just have to put one foot in front of the other. And then when you start on that starting line, I'm like, just look back and say, look, remember the journey. Because that's what makes a triathlete. It's not crossing that finish line. It's all that work that we put in day after day. Those moments that we look at the damn alarm clock and says, look, I do not want to wake up. But we do regardless. And as a coach, we, I'm like, and, and I, try, I tell all my athletes, I try to lead by example. I show up with a smile on my face. I'm like, there are moments I'm like, I don't want to wake up. But I'm like, you know what? I do it not for me. I do it for someone else. I do it for my athletes. And especially for my Special Olympic athletes, you know, they, they, you know, when I started working with them, they don't have a voice. They're hidden. They, they, you don't know how many times they say no to them. When you look at them, I'm like, many people just judge them. It's like, oh, they can't do this. I was like, no, I know exactly how that feels. And I'm going to show the world how strong you are. And I got to tell you, it's been amazing. Is it amazing? You got me fired up over here. Like, what can I do next? What can I do to help somebody? Because I feel like I'm not doing enough. You know, like, I'm thinking my little pep rally we just did, psh, that is nothing. But no, it's a start. But no, I yeah. I appreciate that. You know, I'm, I have the same mindset in terms of nobody left behind. And I yeah. think in this sport, it's easy to leave behind the people that don't look like they should belong. And, you know, to your point. <laughs> amen. Amen. Amen, girl. Amen. 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 Because you know what? We always I make mean, many, like all the magazines, they're all focusing on the fast people. Yeah. They're all focusing on the people like, oh, do this, take this. But they forget who really makes the sport. Yeah. It's those people that says, look, I could do it. Those yeah. people who are spending 16, I'm like 15 hours and a half, 14 hours, they're out there, they're working, they're striving. We, I mean, people forget about them. 
Yeah. It's not how fast you did it. I mean, you don't know what they're going through. You don't know, yeah. I mean, the battles that these people go through on it every single day. But you know what? They did the same work that you did, and they crossed that finish line. And people forget about those. And for those, I, who I fight for. Same. Look, same. let me so, snap too. Preach, girl. Yes. <laughs> no, for real. Like, and like now I'm seeing more people focus on the beginner. People weren't thinking about beginners. They just weren't. Yeah. It's not just beginners, but beginners in every area. Like, we need to just dismantle what what it quote unquote should look like. And let's let it be. Because everybody, as long mm-hmm. as they have the heart to try, they can. But yeah. I get it. I respect athletes who are elite and are professionals because I admire that. I love to see that. Like when I'm riding on the bike, as you said, in those dark hours, I tune into that mm-hmm. so that I can get and glean from motivation. But I recently have opportunities to talk to them. And I was just at a cycling classic in Washington, D.C., the Armed Forces Cycling Classic. And mm-hmm. One of the, uh, one of the professional cyclists, I like to know like psychologically what goes on in their minds because they're so nice. Like they have, like, they're like tender heart, like very kind. will talk to you. But when they get out there on that criterium course, it's like they turn into the beast. And I'm like, so what is it that clicks in your brain that goes from kind beast mode like just it's like a flip of the switch and it's just so I'm just so enamored because I think we need everybody like we need everybody and I think that's what makes the world go round and so I think what Hector and I are trying to say is it doesn't matter your ability it doesn't matter what you look like it doesn't matter your ethnicity it doesn't matter your your gender it doesn't matter your physical appearance the color of your skin What's in your heart? Can you believe that you can do it and get with somebody, i.e., like Hector says, get a coach or join a team so that you can have an opportunity to do what people have told you that you couldn't do. And that's in anything, whether it's triathlon. And I said triathlon, yes, triathlon, whatever, all the way to getting your PhD, whatever it is, don't let anyone stop you. I agree. 100% because it's like the sky is the limit and I'm like we we always have that dream of like what if what if what if but what if you actually said I'm like instead of one day say day one today is my day one in which I'm going to do something you know and Arnold Schwarzenegger said like look if you work an hour a day towards your goal and it goes 365 days within one year you'll become an expert because you put one hour of work towards your dream. So that's all we gotta do is just put in the work. What's gonna cost you 30 minutes? 30 minutes. And but we make all these excuses in the world. Oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. But we just have to shift. And with all my especially with all my athletes, you know, I, I you know, I have this chant that says, I will, I can, I must. When that will becomes a can and then it becomes a must that you must do this your determination will change and your mindset Mm -hmm. will shift to a completely different person and the thing is we don't like to get rid of the old you and because we are scared of the new you we scared that we're going to fail but we just have to try to look get rid of that old person Get rid of that person. We stop looking back through that rear mirror and look straight ahead. Are you for hire to call every morning? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's an it's, alarm it's clock awesome. for Hector Torres. Hector Torres is calling. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. I will. Dude, I wake can. Up. I must. This is your chance for you know, after, I love it. Yeah, and it was. And then it's like after every practice, all my special Olympic kids, I say, guys, hands in, hands in. And they all say it. I'm like, I will. I can. And they scream it. And mm. they scream it at the top of their lungs. And I'm like, if you just did it ourselves. And we're mm. like, oh, that's stupid. I'm like, no, it's not. 
Yeah. And it's like, and I have my age groupers. They're like, you know what? I'm like, I need to take that upon myself. They're like, well, you should. Yeah. So and you know it what is I was, possible. I was talking earlier about those technical difficulties we were having. <clears throat> mm. Yeah. I knew it was going to be fire. I just didn't know how fire was going to be. I was like, this is what was going <laughs> to keep us from happening. We were having, exactly. just yep. for those of you who are listening, we were having some technical sound issues and you might hear that at the beginning of the podcast and nothing that I can do, but it was happening. And I was like, this only happens when greatness is about to happen because there's always an adversary that wants to stop the good. Um, and that's when you have I to do. double down and go harder, right? Because uh-uh, you're not stopping anything that I came here to do, not on today. And this podcast mm-hmm. is going to get done today. Okay. Okay. Yeah, doing it. I can, I will, I can, and I must, I and we must. are doing it exactly. today. Okay. Yep. So let's go back. Um, your first race, you DNF'd, but the second race where you got to fully do whatever triathlon it was, take us through that race. It took, I'm like, I got in the water <laughs> and I took three or four strokes. <laughs> and I was like, the lifeguard, I says, I, to, I looked at the lifeguard and he says, can you follow me? And it was like, and it was fear. And it was fear because I was like, I need to finish this. And I need to finish that. I'm like, it was fear. And I was like, I need to stop. And I was like, okay, I need to get it. I get through. And then she's like, are you okay? And then you see the boats next to me. I was like, I'm going to make this. And I'll take three strokes. I'm like, oh, I keep on going. And then when I, when I saw ground, and then I looked at my time, I was like, I didn't care. It said 45 minutes. But I was just happy that I did it. And they were like standing there, we're waiting for you. I was like, I don't care. I just ran onto my mountain bike, <laughs> a mountain bike. It was not a road bike. It was not like a good expensive bike. It was a mountain bike. because That's the only thing I was able to afford at the time. And then I just started biking. And then the first person that I saw, I saw them, you're doing a great job. I was the last one out of the water. <laughs> not that I wanted to brag, but I was just happy. I was like, you're doing great. And I just kept on pedaling, kept on pedaling. And then when I, when I started to run, I was just happy. I was just cheering people on. I was like, look, you did great. You did awesome. You know, and there, and I was telling people, I was the last one out of the water. <laughs> and I just kept on going. And then, um, and, and all the pictures are like, Hector, you look great, but why is, why is that old person in front of you on the picture? I was like, I don't care. I look great in the picture. I finished the damn race. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like I, I did it and then from that day on I was like I found my calling and every single time I race each time I see a person next to me I say you're doing a great job just keep on pushing and I'm like and I as, as you mentioned and you mentioned something earlier that resonated with me that it says you know I always um go back go back to those persons, to, to that person who's still out there. And for every single, I mean, and for those who know me, if you see me at the race, you see me on the run course with a boom box, with music, cheering, every, cheering every single person on because I know what they're going through. So yeah, that's how I started. <laughs> Yeah, I'm hiring you not only for my wake up calls, but also to be at my on courses when I'm running. So I, I can hear that <laughs> in boom box and not be the only one still out there. But it's not about, you know, when you're trying, the goal is to finish and the race day is your victory lap, regardless of what happens on race day. You know, there's a lot of things that sometimes are out of your control. And I've experienced that myself, you know, getting DNFs for things that I just couldn't control. And it sends you in a negative headspace, right? Like you start to self-doubt yourself, at least I did. And you start to be like, am I good at this? Am I, should I keep doing it? And then at some point you work through it with lots of therapy and other things. And you're just like, no, it doesn't, one race doesn't define who I am. It doesn't define. Yes. Two races don't define yeah, no, I, I, who I am. What defines I, you know, what it, happens when no one's looking? Am I getting up for my workouts? Am I getting up and doing the things I need to do for my job when I really want to be on my bike? 
you know, those are the things that define you, not a race. The race is a celebration. And exactly. I just want to encourage anyone when you're approaching anything, approach it from a victorious standpoint, because you've already, you're already victorious. You already have the victory. I agree. Well, I agree with you 100% because I'm like, if you, I'm like, it's, it, you know, race day is just icing on the cake. It's yeah. icing on the cake and it's, um, enjoy it, embrace it. So, yeah. Ooh, so 34 Ironman later, how many races in total have you done completely? I lost count. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost counts. I lost count. I'm like, I have, it's, I'm like, it's, it's so, I, I've lost count. I'm like, literally, I was like, I have a box. I'm like, I have my, you know, many of my medals up, but then I have a full other box of, of medals that I have to put up. And it was like, but there's so many memories, so many sort of memories. But, and, and people ask me, what's next? You know, and, and many people see me, they're like, you're a big guy. You, I'm like, you don't look like a triathlete. And yeah, I'm like, I pursued bodybuilding, you know? And, I, and I'm like, I'm like, you know, because it's, it, I pursued it. And then they're like, you can't do both. I'm like, watch me. You do and both? So, and I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and it's like it's funny because I did uh, every single year. I do Ironman Cosmo every single year, and I was like, "Oh my God, you're humongous!" I was like, "Yes, but watch me. I will do both." And they're like, "You can't do both." I'm like, "Watch me," and I'm like, "No, I will walk a marathon if I need to, but I will cross that finish line if I have to jog." And I'm like, and, and it's like, and I will do it. It's your mindset. It's your mindset because who? Who will willingly admit that they will walk a marathon just to get to a finish line? Most people feel guilty if they have to walk. It's your mindset. Oh, exactly. I was like, look, I just need to put one foot in front of the other. And I'm like, you can see pictures of me and I'm like videos of me. I'm like, okay, I'm going forward. I need, just need to get there. You need to get there. And it was like, because that gun went off and I was like, I made a commitment to myself. Every single year, I'll go back to Cosimo to finish that race because um, and the reason why Cosmo has so much significance to me, because it was my first race after my accident and I was fearful to get back on the bike. And I says, look, this is the Ironman that I need to do every single year. And I was like, and when I was out there on the bike course, uh, uh, in the first time, um, doing that race, I told people on the run course, I'm like three months ago, I was in a wheelchair and look at me now. And then they were like, what? I was like, yes, I was in a wheelchair and I'm crawling, I'm walking and I'm doing I'm whatever I can. And I, I've, got, I've, I've done um, Ironman Cosmo at 10 hours and 45 minutes. I've done it in, two, I've done it into um, six, um, 15 hours and 45 minutes. I've done it to 16 hours and two minutes, but I've done it. And it doesn't matter. You just changed my mindset. I was like, look, I'm going to do it regardless. And it's like, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And, it, and the thing is, Many people are just scared. They're scared of that, of that they're going to be judged. But who cares? Because if you look at a flower, when, when you see a bouquet of flowers, the flowers is not looking next to the other one. How great are you blooming? No, they just <laughs> bloom. So girl, just bloom. You just have to bloom and just grow because people are going to see how you're going to shine. So be the flower that you want to be. And you know what? And just shine how you're supposed to. You know, excuse me. This has gone completely off the rails and not in the direction in which I would have planned. But I think it's so necessary. <laughs> I think it's so necessary. And whoever you are who needs to hear this, I hope that you just bloom and grow and not worry about any judgment about how your hair looks. Cause I'm having a bad hair day today, mm -hmm. but it's okay. <laughs> Cause I got into the pool. Okay? It doesn't matter how your kit fits. It doesn't matter what your bike looks like. It doesn't matter what kind of shoes you have. Just bloom and grow, lean into the discomfort and come out on top. And even if the, the outcome isn't what you want it to be, 
it's still better than someone who is still on the couch. Yeah. yeah you know, I agree with you because I got to tell you, I'm like, everyone thinks I'm like, I'm going to be judged. Everyone's going to watch me. I'm like, who cares? Because you're doing better than everyone else in the world is doing. As you mentioned, I'm like, people are just in the couch, eating their feelings, feeling bad about themselves, but you're doing something for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what matters. That's why bloom, girl, bloom as much as you can. So. Yeah, I'm here for that. So let's, I want to try to get in the stuff that you do for Special Olympics, because I think that's incredible and amazing. And oh. the fact that you're getting to go to different federations now to kind of implement programs like you started here in the United States. Let's talk a little bit about that. So what does it take to so it's start? Well, in 2017, I'm like, Special Olympics came out to me and says, well, can you start this pilot program? And I, I took a moment. I was like, hmm. I helped, you know, with paratriathlon in the beginning in 2000, you know, back then. Um, in 2012, I was a head coach for Team USA. And I was like, all right. I'm like, okay, how difficult can this be? I'm like, all right, let's do it. And little did I know, little did I know, I was like, it's, they told me, look, it's all about inclusion. They want to be included. They want to be treated like other people. And I was like, all right, let's do this. And then I was like, all right, let's get on the box. We're going to do step ups. We're going to do something. And they were look at me. They're like, you're too rough on these people. And I was like, it's all about inclusion, right? They want to be treated like everyone else. So let's do it. They're like, hey, do you have to come down a little bit? I was like, no. And it was like, and it was, you want to be treated equally? I'm going to treat you equally. And I'm going to, and I'll modify as many things as possible. And, you know, but then it came a change of heart that it made me understand that everyone is different. We all learn differently. I had to understand that what autism is, I had to understand what Down syndrome is, how people reflect, how they understand. And that's when I had to take a moment back and says, look, we all are different. How can I portray a message? And you can see the parents says, you're too rough. I was like, no, my expectations are high for them because I see great things for them. So when I started working with Chris, um, you know, the parents were like, you're too rough. I was like, no, he goes, you know what? When you pass away, he's going to be confronting the world by himself. And we need to get him ready. And they're like, all right. And then like I tell you with, with Nick, we butted heads so many times at the beginning, but down the roads of like, it's all we just wanted for the good cause and just to help and make an impact worldwide. Then, um, when uh, we started helping with six athletes, then seven athletes, then eight, then came to 20, then came to 30. Then when Chris crossed that finish line at Ironman Florida, it became a ripple effect worldwide. You know, and it was, um, it was with the help with many, with the entire team because it takes a team. And it came, um, they reached out to my team, to the Central Florida Tri Club, and it says, look, how can we help because we need a team and i'm like i could go over that day um of ironman florida of what happened and relive it day by day because um the moments that um if it wasn't for jennifer carlos dan Glebe, and the community they came together uh and there's more stories that go behind this that happened um, leading into the race but it was the community that came together and um and since then um you know, if we provided hope, hope to many parents that says, look, if my kid, if this kid could do it, it gives kid, um, hope to my kid that was just diagnosed, I'm like, we're down syndrome that he could do it or anyone else possible. And, um, and so it became a ripple effect worldwide. And now many other countries are implementing within their system, um, within their federations. Um, I just got back from Slovakia, Special Olympics. Um, in Slovakia has a great um, team together that they put on um, third year. They put a triathlon with, um, um, with the, oh my goodness, with the challenge family. Um, it was, um, it was called Samari, yeah, Samari, um, mm -hmm. in Slovakia. And it was, a, it was a, it's amazing. It was the third year they've done it. 
It's held at the Olympic Training Center they have in Slovakia. And we are invited every year and we send three to four athletes and every single country participates. And um, it's been fascinating to see that the impact that we have had since we started doing the sport. And as I tell everyone, I will, I can, I must. And these kids have shown that it is possible. You just have to give them a chance. So, um, thank you so much for all of your time. I appreciate you. You have motivated us so much. I think we didn't get to a lot of the questions about who you are because we, you were motivating us, which is so brilliant. So a couple of rapid fire questions for you. Do you, uh, favorite artist? Celine Dion. Okay. Favorite, <laughs> your favorite song. Right now it's Jess Glenn. It's, um, my goodness um it's oh my goodness my favorite song and i don't know the words i'll tell you right now um it is a friend of mine friend of mine all right just glenn swim in a wetsuit or without wetsuits <laughs> okay favorite post-race meal a hamburger oh okay indoor training or outdoor cycling during training season? Indoors. Swim, bike, run, rank them in order of preference. Swim, bike, and then run. Oh, interesting. Um, a, a dream training partner, historical or alive? Um, he's still alive. It's one of my athletes that I coached since he was 10. He became a pro. His name is Luis Ortiz. Okay. And, um, you know, so yeah, I'm like, I love training with him since he was a kid and he's, he's an awesome, he's an awesome. So yeah. And we don't let anyone leave the podcast without answering. Do you pee on the bike or get off and take a proper pee break? Oh my goodness. I get off the bike. This is nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, thank you it's so nasty. much. <laughs> you know, some people got to do what they got to do, Hector. I go, I go, my damn. Well, thank you so you much, Hector Torres, for being with us. Uh, whenever you try beginners like you always win, be sure to like and follow us on social media and uh, on your favorite podcast platform. My name is Mashonda Miles, also known as Mashonda Shines, and we are out. Peace. Bye, everybody. Peace. Bye. Thank you for tuning in and listening to this episode. We need your help so we can continue to try at TBL. So for more information on where you can find and subscribe to this podcast, visit www.trybeginnersluck.com. And don't forget, whenever you try beginner's luck, you always win.